from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, tonight, Governor Steve Bullock takes some action with Yellowstone County to shut down the spread of COVID-19. As state health authorities report a record number of new confirmed COVID cases today, two major steps are put into motion to target businesses and individuals who refuse to follow COVID rules and restrictions. Well, nearly 1,000 new confirmed COVID-19 cases reported across Montana today, this along with three more deaths. Now, two of the victims reported in Dawson County and one in Marr County. MTN reports the statewide total of COVID-19 related deaths is now at 293. As for the 932 new positive cases reported by the state today, Yellowstone County reports 173, followed by Flathead with 112, Gallatin with 100, Missoula with 96, and Cascade County with 89. Now, Governor Bullock was in Billings today and says we are in for a long, tough road if we don't get the COVID spread under control. Q2's Russ Riesinger was there for today's announcement and next steps to curb the numbers here in Yellowstone County. On a day that Montana smashed its single day record for most COVID cases with nearly 1,000, Governor Bullock holding a news conference here in Billings to talk about measures that can be taken to make sure that more businesses comply with health orders. The virus will keep on spreading if there are no protections in place and no accountability to the restrictions that we already have. Part of the plan to change that in Yellowstone County, which has the most COVID cases in the state, includes hiring four COVID education liaison officers using CARES Act money to investigate complaints. County Health Officer John Felton says there have been hundreds of them. If they do validate the complaint, the business, individual, or organization in violation would receive education about compliance ex expectations and guidance on how to demonstrate compliance. That business, individual, or organization will also be informed that an unannounced follow-up visit will occur. If a second visit validates the complaint again, evidence gathered by the liaisons would be turned over to the county attorney's office and to me as county health officer. Felton says that could result in criminal charges from the county attorney and that he also does have the power to close a building down. Our position at the Billings Chamber of Commerce is that in order to keep the business community at large open, as well as to get the high number of positive cases under control, there must be enforcement behind local and state mandates. We know how quickly this virus spreads, and as Montanans, we should always put the health of our own employees, friends, and neighbors first. All of those who spoke today say that most businesses are playing by the rules, but they say those who aren't are putting everyone at risk. In Billings, I'm Russ Riesinger reporting for MTN News. Thanks so much, Russ. Now Bullock also announced the State Health Department is launching a new page where people can report concerns. That complaint form is on the Department of Health and Human Services website. Well, a former Billings doctor came out of retirement to help with COVID-19 patients in New York and now is bringing that experience home. In May, Dr. Chris Spangin came out of retirement to work at New York University Langone Health. She says in her 30 years, she has not seen an illness like COVID-19. Secondary infection and isolation are two of the big challenges she faced with patients. Now she is back to working in the St. Vincent Healthcare Intensive Care Unit. Treating things more aggressively than you might for a, a normal pneumonia. When someone starts having some troubles with blood pressure or heart rate, cardiac issues, I realize that with this disease, that can actually get worse very quickly and very seriously. The uh, clotting problem, blood clots, was something that uh, was not appreciated to begin with, and yet it's a huge part of this disease. And we will hear more from Dr. Spangin tonight at 10 o'clock here on Q2. Well, now turning to Q2 Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire to tell us more about this snow that's leaving and uh -oh. even more oh, that's on the way. Yeah, Bob. today was kind of like a round one and then round two is coming later tomorrow. Let me show you how much snow we got in our area today. This is going to blow your doors off. Check this out. As you can see over at Red Lodge, four miles west of Red Lodge, they had 28 inches of snow since October 21st through the October 22nd. That's yesterday and today, right? Red Lodge Mountain. 
Mount reports 25 inches. Luther 13, Cook City 11. Uh, they had 10 inches of snow at Immigrant. Uh, Burgess Junction reports 9, 8.3 inches near Livingston. And at Logan Airport, they've reported 4 inches of snow there. Last night at midnight, they had 1 inch of uh, snow on the ground. Now they're reporting 5 inches of snow. And the difference is 4 inches, right? Well, check out the threat board. It's starting to fill in for the next storm moving in. You can see various amounts of snowfall moving in. Here in the Billings area, it looks like it's going to be more like 6 to 12 inches of snow coming out of the storm as it makes its way into this this weekend. And look at this. It's going to get cold. We're looking at four new record low temperatures for the next four days. Friday right on through Monday. Look at Monday morning. One below zero. Wow. A lot of little records will fall this next couple of days. We'll have more in your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, as the weather turns colder, the need to take care of Billings homeless population becomes even greater. The Montana Rescue Mission tells Q2 that the team there is ready to help no matter what the weather. Even as they follow distance guidelines, employees say they can house and take care of those in need effectively, all while serving three hot meals a day. In the last week alone, they've seen a huge outpouring from the community and increased donations. You know, this time of year, like tonight, is supposed to be what, 10 degrees, even below that? It'd be really hard to be under a bridge or in your car on the street. And so we stand ready to help people. Uh, we've had a, a, a real outpouring of community support with the cold weather, people dropping off coats and blankets, hats and gloves, winter boots, all things that we desperately need. And uh, with the cold weather, the first snow of the year, uh, people call us up and say, how can I help? And we've seen a real outpouring of that. So we're very thankful. And of course, we can use more coats, hats, gloves, blankets, warm shoes, warm socks. And if you would like to donate clothing or food to the Montana Rescue Mission, you can simply stop by one of its locations. And Lundgren says they are especially in need of extra large and XX large winter jackets. Well, things got pretty darn cute at Rimrock Subaru this morning. Today marked the second annual adoption event with the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter to help connect car buyers with canines. Well, despite the cold outside, the mood inside was fun and festive. Staff at the dealership also brought their dogs into work to show support for the program. Well, today is National Make a Dogs Day, and Subaru has invested $28 million to make sure that pets are taken care of and the, the homeless ones get, get a home. And we're donating $100 to our local shelter for every pet that's adopted. It's huge for animals that have disabilities and they make sure that every pet gets a home or tries to make sure that every pet gets a home. And Rimrock Subaru will continue to donate $100 for every adoption at the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter through the end of this month. Well, with less than two weeks until Election Day, the plan for dealing with a continued surge of COVID-19 cases in Montana is still an overriding issue in statewide campaigns, particularly in the contest for governor. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison gives us the latest on what the top candidates are saying and doing when it comes to this pivotal issue. Earlier this week, Democratic gubernatorial candidate Mike Cooney convened a panel of national health experts to talk about the status of vaccines for COVID-19 and what states should be doing to prepare. He followed that up with a list of his priorities, including leading by example, such as wearing a mask, social distancing, and avoiding large gatherings. To say just personal responsibility and opening up the floodgates gets us the results we see today. With numbers climbing, with deaths climbing, that's not personal responsibility. That's a not so subtle shot at his Republican opponent, Greg Gianforte whom Cooney and his campaign have chided for rarely wearing a mask at public gatherings and for suggesting a passive stance on public health mandates. When asked whether he would maintain the governor's current emergency order and mask mandates for many counties, Gianforte has demurred. Instead, he's been saying he'll follow the advice of public health professionals and community leaders without being specific. If I was your governor, we would be focused on keeping the most vulnerable safe we'd be relying on personal responsibility, not government mandates. He's also suggested that earlier shutdowns this spring created what he calls an economic pandemic that Montana needs to recover from. Health experts at Cooney's meeting said vaccines should be available within the next several months, but that it will be important to decide who gets it first and how, and to encourage people to take them. Cooney said if he's elected, he'll start work immediately on a distribution plan for the vaccine and a public information plan. He also said he'll work with hospitals, local health departments, and even the National Guard to ensure Montanans are keeping safe during the winter before a vaccine is available. Vaccines may not be with us all that quickly. I'm working on a plan right now to make sure 
that we keep Montanans healthy by doing the things we need to do, getting a vaccine, deploying that bat vaccine the way it needs to be deployed in Montana. Gianforte says much the same, but again, hasn't come out with specifics, saying it's too early to know what will be needed come January. January is a ways off, but with Montana reporting record daily highs of new cases and winter approaching, this virus doesn't look like it's on its way out anytime soon. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Mike. Of course, Montanans are voting right now on the governor's race and many others. At last check, that's less than an hour ago, more than 320,000 Montanans have already cast their mailed ballots. That's right, about 50% of the ballots mailed out across Montana. Well, up next on tonight's Q2 530 News, we're taking a trip to Russia without booking a flight. We have your look inside a unique Billings business pouring out tea and history. Also, the game plan in sports. Catch them if you can. We'll meet one of the Bronx not-so-secret weapons behind their high-flying attack.